Hello, everyone. David Alfred Ostrowski here. And in this recording, I'm going to be presenting a quick demo of Hyperledger Fabric 2.5. I'm going to be running a testnet on an AWS EC2 instance. I'm going to be very closely following the Hyperledger Fabric Read the Docs IO documentation. However, there's a few slight modifications that I had to do to make it work. So if you want to get up and running really quick with Hyperledger Fabric, this may be suitable for you. So I'm going to start from scratch in EC2 instance. So let's get started. As before with typical blockchain, I need a little more resources for Hyperledger. So I'm going to leverage a C5 instance. I'm going to bring that up right now. So I'm going to be running it on Ubuntu. And again, the documentation is pretty good on the Hyperledger site. However, I couldn't run it verbatim to get everything up and running. So let me run through this real quick. And my exact commands are going to be provided on the associated GitHub. So you can cut and paste and within a very short period of time, you should be up and running uh, with your examples. So I did C5 large and have a key pair I defaulted everything else. I'm just gonna launch that instance. So my instance is up and running and I can grab my DNS and launch. I'm going to use Putty as my client as usual. So let me get that up and running. And I'm going to do everything within a single terminal. So I'm only, only going to need one. And do the same configuration I usually do in the videos. So I go full screen on this because I'm only using a single. Oh, you don't have to see me. So, oh, there you go. All right. So I came up now. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is a lot of these commands uh, on Ubuntu, you may be inclined is typically with installing a lot of software is do a sudo uh, install. Here I had to run everything under a pseudo SU. And I'll explain some of the reasons why later on, but primarily my paths were getting confused and the peer command was not working. It wasn't finding the test network. So, so for that reason, and this may not necessarily be the absolute best practice, but it got me up and running with Hyperledger Fabric. So. I do a sudo su, and that takes me into the root. Again, I set my paths, and everything is going to be set to the root privilege. And now I can proceed just as usual with the typical commands. I've seen other documentation where they do the sudo minus s. That didn't work for me, uh, where I had uh, similar errors. So here, I copied an app get update. And that prepares me for the further installations of the software. So that completed. I'm going to do an install on Docker Compose. I'll cut paste head in there as well. Nothing special. So it's C5. This is going to run pretty fast in the install. So we're going to be up and running in no time. I'm going to do a start on Docker. And that's running in the background. I'm running Golang for my examples for the deployment and running on the test network. Next, I'm going to hold down Fabric using a curl command. So Ubuntu curl comes with the installation. So I don't have to install curl as they identify in the documentation. So here's the full command. And again, these commands copy in 
exactly from user documentation. So that part of it is 100%. However, again, I had to run it under the root privilege. I saw the JQ library, that's necessary as well. And now I'm ready for the full fabric installation. And again, using the version here with uh, Docker samples binary, and that gives me the complete installation. So, and again, this isn't gonna take very long. We'll be up and running very, very shortly. Wait for that. And this is gonna be done. And I don't have to really pause. This is gonna complete pretty pretty quickly. Almost there. There we go, we're back. So now I'm going to change directory to fabric samples test network directory. Now you, if this is your initial install, you may not think that it's intuitive to shut the network down, but due to the background job processes, you actually have to run this. First time I ran through, I had some problems. So you have to run the shutdown to actually bring it up, even if you've never formally started the network because this is gonna do some cleanup on the network from the install. So I'm gonna do a formal shutdown and this is necessary again, not implied directly in the documentation, but this is another gotcha. Now I'm gonna bring it up, I'm gonna establish a private network doing the create channel and I'm gonna call that channel, my channel, similar way that they do in the documentation, I'm bringing it up and creating the channel at the same time that's going to allow for the private communication. Okay, uh, a subnet, if you will, between my nodes. And this is looking good. And again, this demonstration, I'm just getting you up and running. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes and details, and I'll leave that for future content, or obviously there's a lot of other additional documentation, but I just wanted to share my experience of what I had to do to get this up and running. So uh, the next step is to do the deployment. I do want to point out that it is interesting to at least take a look at the smart contract because it's not really explicitly presented in the documentation. So let's just go down, just take a quick look at it, and then we're going to deploy it and, and, and fire it up. But it's going to, I think it's going to have a lot more meaning if you just take the time out to take a quick look at it. So let me get to the basic directory here. Pause for a sec. Back again. Okay, so I had to back up one directory to go to asset transfer basic. It's going to allow me to look at a quick look at the smart contract and the data that we're actually going to be inserting into our test network and querying correspondingly with the chain code. So if I go to asset, so here I did a CD uh, to backed up the directory and I'm going to go to asset transfer basic. and chain code go, there we go. And then I'm gonna go down to chain code 
and this is what I wanted to just take a brief look at. So if I do a cat on the smart contract. So this example is basically inserting with the net ledger, it's inserting some starting JSON formatted information into the blockchain as if you had a transaction that's being set up. And you can see the structure of the asset here, the praise value, color ID, owner size. So this is really in getting you started on what a real business transaction would be stored as a hyperledger um, ledger entry. And here is the data asset one, color blue, size five owner. So I have some vehicles that are being stored in a hypothetical transaction. And this is under the init ledger. So once you take a look at this, you can have a full understanding of how this can be programmed and you can build applications around this. And this is a great starting point, especially with the test network, to get a good feel of exactly how it's working. And it's invoked through the create asset and you have the asset definition. And for those of you well-versed in uh, Golang could easily uh, understand it. You know, some of the basics of how this is being managed. So that's it. So we can go back and continue, but I think it's important to um, point that out before we proceed. So let me just go back to test network directory that we're working out of and we can do the deployment at this point. So I reference that directory in the deploy CC. And again, this is directly out of the instruction asset transfer chain code Go and using the Go language. So let's do the deployment to my network. And uh, again, I'm not going to go through all of the intricacies. There's a lot of details here. Just want to put together this video to get you up and running probably under 15 minutes, okay, instead of wondering why some of the commands aren't working appropriately. So here's doing the chain code install. And this, again, works pretty quickly on the associated uh, um, C5 platform. Let's just wait for it. You can see the install uh, chain codes being installed and it's continuing on with the process here. Setting up two organizations. Again, it's not a long time, otherwise I pause it, but this should be okay. So next I can do the paths. I'm gonna set some extra paths and I'm going to invoke that smart contract that has been deployed. And then we can execute a query against the ledger. So here we go. Everything looks like it's, it's approved. It's being successfully deployed to the blockchain. There we go. So now I'm gonna set up the paths. I'm just gonna do them individually. So I don't have any problems with it. Make sure that I get them working installed appropriately. Obviously this would be in an environment file that would be executed on the login, but here we're just using this as a sandbox to get you up and running as soon as possible. But obviously if I log out and log back in, I would have to address these and start putting these in an environment file appropriately. So it's gonna set up all the appropriate paths. Again, I'm not gonna go through all the details here. And we reference localhost and that doesn't have to be configured with the DNS in this case. So all my exports are 
perform room, I could um, dump the past the screen, but they should work appropriately. If they don't, we can always go back. So now I'm gonna do an invoke on that chain code, okay, or my better known smart contract that's been deployed. So I have a very nasty uh, uh, set of paths. This is verbatim directly from the documentation and is calling in at Ledger with arguments. It's so almost would imply that you're not passing in any data, but we just, that's why I specifically went to the smart contract to show you that we're actually executing that in at Ledger, which had the hard-coded JSON data to have the six assets or so that are being, and the arguments are over and above any type of additional parameters that you might want to specify. So the invoke is successful and it says 200, it looks good. So let's query that and see if we can get the data out of it. And there we go. So I just did a chain peer chain code query on my channel, the channel I established. And I asked to grab all the assets. And here we have the praise value 300 color blue ID asset one owner, Tomoko size five and all the other corresponding assets. So there we go. So what do we do? We're able to start from scratch. We installed Hyperledger Fabric on a clean C5 installation. We set all the necessary software, installed all the background software for Golang. We fired up, we deployed our chain code, and we were able to invoke that chain code and query it subsequently. So we, we uh, wrote and read back from the ledger through our channel. So hope this helps. Thanks for listening. And again, the steps, and again, for this outside the slight modifications are just taken directly from the documentation, but I'm consolidated them and put it on my GitHub for easy reference in the readme install. So thanks for listening. Hope this helps. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.